Do you have too much air in your water lines? I can tell you we sure do. Uh, here just recently, we have started to wear, we flush the toilet, we run the sink, we try to take a shower, and it is blowing straight air. Straight air. Like you'll turn a sink on and no water comes out at all, despite the wells on, the pressure tank's full, we just get air instead of water. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about my well system and what I'm doing to troubleshoot it. I don't know if this will fix it or not, so y'all don't hate me in the comments. But I want to show you something that I had a hard time finding information about, so I hope this helps. So the way my pressure tank is set up, we do not have a bladder in the top of our tank. Some have a rubber diaphragm up top. Mine does not. This is a Flex Light, um, I think they call it an FL, no it's not an FL120. Uh, somewhere there was a tag on it. It doesn't matter. It's the, oh here it is. Oh it is the FLS120. Okay. Anyway, 119, 120 gallon, says it's a 119 gallon tank right there. Okay. What it has is you have your high port in the side which is where our pressure switch is at and we have this lower port i always thought this lower port was just for the pressure gauge because this is all i saw in the lower port but i had noticed before that when i bled my tank all the way down for reasons this little thing would start blowing air out and i couldn't wrap my head around it. i did not know what it was i finally talked to a well installer and he explained to me this is a float valve it's called an air release okay so the way this thing is designed is that little screw gives you additional tension against your air release. But what this is supposed to do is basically as your water pocket comes up, now I'm going to move the valve down, but just watch as your water pocket comes up, okay, it closes off. There's a tiny little, there's a little rubber plug in there. And I, I'm, I wanted to show you guys this as I had it torn apart, but I didn't have time. See that little rubber plug right there at the base? Just right here by my thumb. That's a little rubber plug and it has a tiny little pinhole right in the middle of it. Inside of this mechanism, there's a little plastic plunger with a pointed tip that will plug off that little hole. There's a spring behind it and then there's this screw. Now in mine, the screw was threaded really, really deep in there. And what the weld installer told me, he said, first thing you can do is back that screw all the way out. He said, you won't harm anything. He said, you, you can actually take it completely out and it won't harm anything. The way this mechanism is designed to work is as your water pocket comes up, it will plug that little hole off. So water should not leak. Okay. But what it does, what it's supposed to do is basically your tank is full of air. You know, over half the tank is full of air effectively. And if your air pocket gets too big and this float valve is hanging down. So say for example, mine is stuck down. Your air pocket will get so large that effectively your tank doesn't have any water in it at all and some tanks will have a or they may have a riser pipe in the middle to where the tank actually draws water from you know higher up it doesn't just water in water out on the bottom it might have a riser pipe so if that riser pipe is coming up and your air pocket is too far down that's how you're going to get air just straight blowing through okay again i don't know if that's our problem but that's the only thing that i can diagnose the way this tank works, stop baby, the way this tank works, there is not a bladder in here, okay? I don't have a way to come hook an air compressor up and pressure up a bladder. What it does, every time my well shuts off and my water level starts to fall, this little check valve right here goes and it lets air come into the well. And then when the well pump kicks on, that water pushes up and it chases that air pocket and it puts it back into here. So there is supposed to be air in the tank, but for two years now, or three years that we've been on this well, we have not had this air blasting into the system like this. So by design, it's not a problem. Anyway, 
So I wanted to explain to you guys how this mechanism works, what's on the inside of it. Don't be scared of it. If you guys have a well that's gassing a ton of air, first thing you can do is try to take this apart. Now I took mine all the way out and there was, there was some silt and sludge. I mean, you can see the silt right in there because our well's been making silt. There was some silt and sludge maybe that had blocked off that little pinhole. And so maybe my air release just simply wasn't working. I don't know that for a fact. As I bled the tank down, it started blowing air out of here, but that was after I had already adjusted this screw out. So it may be that that little port was just plugged with dirt from silt, and maybe it just wasn't letting it um, blow air out like it was supposed to. I don't know that. I half suspected that my tank, let me have that, that my tank was full of sludge, but I don't know if I can get the camera to see in there or not. Probably not. But I did look inside my tank since I pulled that port out. You guys can't see it. And there is no pile of sludge. You know, um, I had speculated in the, the well installer, you know, he speculated that maybe, you know, the tank was basically full of sludge. And so there was just no water capacity. Um, we are still getting silt coming through the lines. We're working on fixing that. And I think that's part of this problem. But my hope right now is that I took that out and cleaned it. So hopefully it will start working like it's supposed to again. And I'm hoping, excuse me, I'm hoping that fixes our problem. We're going to put it back in. We're going to let the system pressure up. We're going to go run some water lines and see if we don't still get air blowing out. Like I said, I don't know if this is fixing or not, but I couldn't find much information out there about it. So I want to share it with you guys in case your well is doing the same thing. Maybe you'll find it of value. So we've got it put back in and I just want to tell you guys what happened. I know you would have liked live action better. As we kicked the pump back on, this thing started blowing out air, just as you would suspect. It's at it, and it was blowing out a good solid stream of air, more than it was before. So I think that's a good sign. Of course, the problem is it is seeping water, which I don't like. Um, but there's just that little rubber plunger in there. And so basically, it, there's gonna be a, this is kind of one of those weird deals where it's a low pressure leak, not a high pressure leak, I hope. I'm hoping that as the pressure tank gets high enough inside of here that it will squeeze that little rubber plug a little tighter and make it seal off because if this thing's going to sit here and run water like that forever then we got a problem so hopefully that stops <laughs> but for right now it's still filling up we're going to let it fill all the way up and just see what it does okay so i ran that screw all the way back in it's still dripping just a little bit but it's not pouring out like it was um there's a spring inside of there that remember I told you that spring pushes against the plastic plunger that's supposed to help block off that hole um, to keep it from dripping but I really don't I mean this is really not a wet space area I really don't want water dripping on the floor in here so we may have to see about replacing this thing it's all very simple components um, I just don't know what you do if I mean by design it should it should plug off and it should stop dripping um, you know, it, it could drip water, like I said, at a low pressure leak or kind of an intermediate, it might drip water. But certainly by design, it's not supposed to drip water all the time. Um, but we also, so we were, when we were troubleshooting this morning, we were in here knocking on the tank and it was very hollow sounding, which it should be up top, this is an air pocket, but it was hollow sounding all the way down here. And now that's solid. So this is all full of water now. I don't know exactly where the crossover's at. Right about in there. So that's solid. Hear the ring. So our water's all the way up to here, which is terrific. Um, our water's all the way up to there. I'm pretty sure that's gonna fix our air problem. Woo, fingers crossed. So I'm just changing out this deep well air release valve on the tank. Um, showed you guys I was having some issues with it. And uh, since I'm, I'm waiting right now and the system's still to drain down, and so while I'm waiting, uh, I just wanted to show you how this new one looks. So my old one, I think I showed it to you. Um, it has a, well I'll show it to you when I pull it out actually, uh, I'll do that. Uh, so I'll show you the old one to pull it out, but the new one, um, if you look on here, so it's got the same float. So this float, as the water level rises in the tank, this float will rise up. You see it's dangling down. Let me push it up a little bit. When it pushes up, you can see this is what looks like just like a tire chuck in there, okay? 
when the valve push when the float pushes up that chuck will pull shut okay so when the float is down when the float is down the chuck pulls in just like it would when you were trying to air up a tire when the float pushes up I'm trying to set all the tank here when the float pushes up it would on the door then that tire chuck pushes down what I'm calling the tire chuck that bleed valve pushes down which effectively closes it of course there's still just a bypass port here on the top that's where your pressure tank your gauge goes just so you can see tank pressure uh, it doesn't do anything else but the biggest thing is how that float functions so like I said I'm going to show you the other one when I pull it out but this one is, is newer and to me is really a lot simpler uh, than the other one the other one's got a spring and a rubber diaphragm and all sorts of nonsense so let's get this swapped in get the other one out and I'll show you what it looks like so here's the old float valve that I pulled out that I showed you guys before this one uh, when the float drops it basically releases force that's against this little rubber there's a little rubber plug there and in the very middle of that rubber plug there's a tiny little pinhole so when the float comes up it blocks that pinhole basically what you're relying on is the the buoyancy force of pushing the float up is so much greater than the little bit of force yeah so anyway the for the buoyancy force pushing the float up basically presses against that hole and makes it block off but then at the same time inside of here there's a little plastic plug and a spring and all sorts of stuff that pushes back against it to help balance it out so there's just there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of stuff going on and moving parts of course is a problem especially in my case when I've got this silt that wants to plug and mess stuff up so this actually I'd taken it out the second time was gonna clean it and you can see it started to crack there when I started to pull it apart so we had to replace it but you can see all the silt and sludge that down inside of there that's where that where your pressure gauge goes so hopefully we didn't plug our pressure gauge off not that it matters this system works on the pressure switch not the gauge but I guess if my pressure switch ever gets plugged up that could be a problem anyway just want to show you that that's the old one um, all plastic a lot of moving parts I don't much care for it I the new one I like the design of the new one better and so far it's on and the system's pressured up and it's not leaking like this one was so so far so good